the topic of my speech today is deadly serious. And uh, I think it needs to be made at the outset of this campaign. In the winter of 1777, it was harsh and cold as the Continental Army marched to Valley Forge. General George Washington knew he faced the most daunting of tasks, to fight and win a war against the most powerful empire existent in the world at the time. His mission was clear, liberty, not conquest, freedom, not domination, national independence, not individual glory. America made a vow, never again would we bow down to a king. Months ahead would be incredibly difficult. But General Washington knew something in his bones, something about the spirit of the troops he was leading, something, something about the soul of the nation he was struggling to be born. In his general order, he predicted, and I quote, with one heart and one mind, with fortitude and with patience, they would overcome every difficulty, the troops he was leading. And they did. They did. This army that lacked blankets and food, clothes and shoes, this army whose march left bloody bare footprints in the snow, this ragtag army made up of ordinary people, their mission, George Washington declared, was nothing less than a sacred cause. That was the phrase he used, a sacred cause. Freedom, liberty, democracy, American democracy. I just visited the grounds of Valley Forge. I've been there a number of times from the time I was a Boy Scout years ago. You know, it's the very site that I think every American should visit because it tells the story of the pain and the suffering and the true patriotism it took to make America. Today, we gather in a new year, some 246 years later, just one day before January 6th. A day forever shared in our memory because it was on that day that we nearly lost America, lost it all. Today, we're here to answer the most important of questions. Is democracy still America's sacred cause? I mean it. This is not rhetorical, academic, or hypothetical. Whether democracy is still America's sacred cause is the most urgent question of our time. And it's what the 2024 election is all about. The choice is clear. Donald Trump's campaign is about him, not America, not you. Donald Trump's campaign is obsessed with the past, not the future. He's willing to sacrifice our democracy, put himself in power. Our campaign is different. For me and Kamala, our campaign is about America. It's about you. It's about every age and background that occupy this country. It's about the future we're going to continue to build together. And our campaign is about preserving and strengthening our American democracy. Three years ago tomorrow, we saw with our own eyes the violent mob storm the United States Capitol. It was almost in disbelief as you first turned on the television. For the first time in our history, insurrectionists had come to stop the peaceful transfer, transfer of power in America. First time. Smashing windows, shattering doors, attacking the police. Outside, gallows were erected as the MAGA crowd chanted, hang Mike Pence. Inside, they hunted for Speaker Pelosi. The House was chanting, as they marched through and smashed windows. Where's Nancy? Over 140 police officers were injured. Jill and I attended the funeral of police officers who died as a result of the events of that day. Because, Donald, because of Donald Trump's lies, they died because these lies brought a mob to Washington. He promised it would be wild, and it was. He told the crowd to fight like hell and all hell was unleashed. He promised he would write them, write them. 
everything they did. He would be side by side with them. Then, as usual, he left the dirty work to others. He retreated to the White House. As America was attacked from within, Donald Trump watched on TV in a private small dining room off, my oval, oval, off the Oval Office. The entire nation watched in horror. The whole world watched in disbelief. And Trump did nothing. Members of his staff, members of his family, Republican leaders who were under attack for the, at that very moment pled with him, act, call off the mob. Imagine had he gone out and said, stop. And still, Trump did nothing. It was among the worst derelictions of duty by a president in American history. An attempt to overturn a free and fair election by force and violence. A record 81 million people voted for my candidacy and to end his presidency. Trump lost the popular vote by 7 million. Trump's claims about the 2020 election never could stand up in court. Trump lost 60 court cases, 60. Trump lost the Republican-controlled states. Trump lost before a Trump-appointed judge and then judges. And Trump lost before the United States Supreme Court. All of it, he lost. <clears throat> Trump lost recount after recount after recount and state after state. But in desperation and weakness, Trump and his MAGA followers went after election officials who, in, who ensured your power as a citizen would be heard. These public service had their lives forever upended by attacks and death threats for simply doing their jobs. In Atlanta, Georgia, a brave black mother and her daughter Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss were doing their jobs electing workers until Donald Trump and his MAGA followers targeted and threatened them, forcing them from their homes and unleashing racist vitriol on them. Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, who was just hit with a $148 million judgment for cruelty and defamation that he inflicted against them. Other state and local elected officials across the country faced similar personal attacks. In addition, Fox News agreed to pay a record eight to $787 million for the lies they told about voter fraud. Let's be clear about the 2020 election. Trump exhausted every legal avenue available to him to overturn the election, every one. But the legal path just took Trump back to the truth that I had won the election and he was a loser. Well, so knowing how his mind works now, he had one, he had one act left, one desperate act available to him, the violence of January the 6th. And since that day, more than 1,200 people have been charged for their assault on the Capitol. Nearly 900 of them have been convicted or pled guilty. Collectively, to date, they have been sentenced to more than 840 years in prison. <laughs> and what's Trump done? Instead of calling them criminals, He's called these, these insurrectionists patriots. They're patriots. And he promised to pardon them if he returns to office. Trump said that there was a lot of love on January the 6th. The rest of the nation, including law enforcement, saw a lot of hate and violence. One Capitol Police officer called it a medieval battle. That same officer called vile rape, was called vile racist names. He said he was more afraid in the capital of the United States of America, in the chambers, than when he was fighting as a soldier in the war in Iraq. He said he was more afraid inside the halls of Congress than fighting in the war in Iraq. And trying to rewrite the facts of January 6th, 
Trump is trying to steal history the same way he tried to steal the election. But he, we knew the truth because we saw it with our own eyes. This wasn't like something, a story being told. It was on television repeatedly. We saw it with our own eyes. Trump's mob wasn't a peaceful protest. It was a violent assault. They were insurrectionists, not patriots. They weren't there to uphold the Constitution. They were there to destroy the Constitution. Trump won't do what an American president must do. He refuses to denounce political violence. So hear me clearly. I'll say what Donald Trump won't. Political violence is never, ever acceptable in the United States political system. Never, never, never. It has no place in a democracy, none. You can't be pro-insurrectionist and pro-American. And yet Trump and his MAGA supporters not only embrace political violence, but they laugh about it. At his rally, he jokes about an intruder whipped up by the big Trump lie, taking a hammer to Paul Pelosi's skull and echoing the very same words used on January 6th. Where's Nancy? And he thinks that's funny. He laughed about it. What a sick... <laughs> My God. I, I think it's despicable, seriously. It's not just for a president, for any person to say that. But to say it to the whole world listening, when I was overseas, anyway. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Trump's assault on democracy isn't just part of his past. It's what he's promising for the future. He's being straightforward. He's not hiding the ball. His first rally for the 2024 campaign opened with a choir of January 6th insurrectionists singing from prison on a cell phone. While images of the January 6th riot played on a big screen behind him at his rally. Can you believe that? This is like something out of a fairy tale, a bad fairy tale. Trump began his 2024 campaign by glorifying the failed violent insurrectionist insurrection at our, on our Capitol. The guy who claims law and order sows lawlessness and disorder. Trump's not concerned about your future, I promise you. Trump is now promising a full-scale campaign of revenge and retribution, his words, for some years to come. They were his words, not mine. He went on to say he'd be a dictator on day one. I mean, if I write in a book of fiction, I said an American president said that, and not in jest. He called in, I quote, the termination, quote, this is a quote, the termination of all the rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the U.S. Constitution, should be terminated if fits his will. It's really kind of hard to believe. Even found in the Constitution, he could terminate? He's threatened the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff with the death penalty. Says he should be put to death because the chairman put his oath to the Constitution ahead of his personal loyalty to Trump. This is coming from a president who called, when he visited his cemeteries, called dead soldiers suckers and losers. Remember that? Sometimes I'm really happy the Irish in me can't be seen. <laughs> it was right around the time I was at Bo's grave, Tommy. How dare he? Who in God's name does he think he is? With former aides, Trump plans to invoke the ins Insurrections Act, the Insurrection Act which would allow him to deploy, which is not allowed to do in ordinary circumstances, allow him to deploy U.S. military forces on the streets of America. He said it. He 
calls those who oppose him vermin. He talks about the blood of America as being poisoned, echoing the same exact language used in Nazi Germany. He proudly posts on social media the words that best describe his 2024 campaign, quote, revenge, quote, power, and quote, dictatorship. There's no confusion about who Trump is, what he intends to do. I placed my hand on our family Bible, and I swore an oath on the very same steps of the Capitol just 14 days after the attack on January the 6th. As I looked out over the capital city, whose streets were lined with National Guard to prevent another attack, I saw an American that had been pushed to the brink, America that had been pushed to the brink. But I felt enormous pride, not in winning, I felt enormous pride in America, because American democracy had been tested American democracy had held together. And when Trump had seen weakness in our democracy and continued to talk about it, I saw strength, your strength. It's not hyperbole, your strength, your integrity, American strength and integrity. Ordinary citizens, state election officials, the American judicial system had put the Constitution first and sometimes at their peril at their peril. Because of them, because of you, the will of the people prevailed. Not the anger of the mob or the appetites of one man. When the attack on January 6th happened, there was no doubt about the truth. At the time, even Republican members of Congress and Fox News commentators publicly and privately condemned the attack. As one Republican senator said, Trump's behavior was embarrassing and humiliating for the country. But now that same senator and those same people have changed their tune. As time has gone on, gone on, politics, fear, money, all have intervened. And now these MAGA voices who know the truth about Trump on January 6th have abandoned the truth and abandoned the democracy. They made their choice. Now the rest of us, Democrats, independents, mainstream Republicans, we have to make our choice. I know mine, and I believe I know America's. We'll defend the truth, not give in to the big lie. We'll embrace the Constitution and the Declaration, not abandon it. We'll honor the sacred cause of democracy, not walk away from it. Today, I make this sacred pledge to you, the defense, protection, and preservation of American democracy will remain, as it has been, the central cause of my presidency. <laughs> America, as we begin this election year, we must be clear, Democracy is on the ballot. Your freedom is on the ballot. <clears throat> yes, we'll be voting on many issues. On the freedom to vote and have your vote counted. On the freedom of a choice. The freedom to have a fair shot. The freedom from fear. <clears throat> and we'll debate and disagree without democracy. No progress is possible. Think about it. The alternative to democracy is dictatorship. The rule of one, not the rule of we, the people. That's what the soldiers of Valley Forge understood. And so was me. What's what, what, what we have to understand it as well. We've been blessed so long with a strong, stable democracy. It's easy to forget why so many before us risked their lives and strengthen democracy, what our lives would be without it. Democracy means having the freedom to speak your mind, to be who you are, to be who you want to be. 
Democracy is about being able to bring about peaceful change. Democracy. Democracy is how we've opened the doors of opportunity wider and wider with each successive generation, not with, notwithstanding our mistakes. But if democracy falls, we'll lose that freedom. We'll lose the power of we, the people, to shape our destiny. If you doubt me, look around the world. Travel with me as I meet with other heads of state throughout the world. Look at the authoritarian leaders and dictators Trump says he admires. He out loud says he admires. I won't go through them all. It'll take too long. Look, remember how he refers, what he, what he refers to what he calls love letter exchanges between he and the dictator of North Korea? Those women and men out there in the audience ever fought for the American military. Would you ever believe you'd hear a president say something like that? His admiration for Putin. I could go on. And look at what these autocrats are doing to limit freedom in their countries. They're limiting freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom to assemble, women's rights, LGBTQ rights. People are going to jail. So much more. It's true, the push and pull of American history is not a fairy tale. Every stride forward in America is met with ferocious backlash many times from those who fear progress and those who exploit that fear for their own personal gain, from those who traffic in lies told for power and profit, for those who are driven by grievance and grift, consumed by conspiracy and victimhood, from those who seek to bury history and ban books. Do you ever think you'd be in a political event talking about book banning for a presidential and a presidential election? The choice and contest between those forces, those competing forces, between solidarity and division is perennial. But this time it's so different. You can't have a contest. You can't have a contest if you see politics as an all-out war instead of a peaceful way to resolve our differences. All-out war is what Trump wants. And that's why he doesn't understand the most fundamental truth about this country. Unlike other nations on Earth, America is not built on ethnicity, religion, geography. We're the only nation in the history of the world built on an idea. Not hyperbole, built on an idea. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. It's an idea declared in the Declaration, created in a way that we viewed everybody as equal and be, should be treated equal throughout their lives. We've never fully lived up to that. We have a long way to go. But we've never walked away from the idea. We've never walked away from it before. And I promise you, I will not let Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans force us to walk away now. We're living in an era where a determined minority is doing everything in its power to try to destroy our democracy for their own agenda. The American people know it, and they're standing bravely in the breach. Remember after 2020, January 6th insurrection to undo the election in which more Americans had voted than any other in American history? America saw the threat posed to the country, and they voted them out. In 2022, historic midterm election. In state after state, election after election, the election deniers were defeated. Now in 2024, Trump is running as the denier-in-chief the election denier-in-chief. Once again, he's saying he won't honor the results of the election if he loses. Trump says he doesn't understand. Well, he still doesn't understand the basic truth. That is, you can't love your country only when you win. You can't love your country only when you win. Well, I'll keep my commitment to be president for all of America, whether you voted for me or not. I've done it for the last three years, and I'll continue to do it. 
Together, we can keep proving that America is still a country that believes in decency, dignity, honesty, honor, truth. We still believe that no one, not even the president, is above the law. We still believe. The vast majority of us still believe that everyone deserves a fair shot at making it. We're still a nation that gives hate no safe harbor. I tell you from my experience working with leaders around the world, and I mean this sincerely, not a joke, that America is still viewed as the beacon of democracy for the world. I can't tell you how many, how many world leaders, and I know all of them, virtually all of them, grab my arm in private and say, you can't win. Tell me. No, my country will be at risk. Think of how many countries, Tommy, you know that are on the, burn, on the edge. Imagine. We still believe in we the people. And that includes all of us, not some of us. Let me close with this. In the coal winter of 1777, George Washington and his American troops of Valley Forge waged the battle on behalf of a revolutionary idea. That everyday people, like where I come from and the vast majority of you, not a king or a dictator, that everyday people can govern themselves without a king or a dictator. In fact, in the rotunda of the Capitol, there's a giant painting of General George Washington, not President Washington. And he is resigning his commission as commander-in-chief of the Continental Army. A European king at the, at the time said, after he won the revolution, now's the time for him to declare his kingship. But instead, the mob that attacked the Capitol, waving Trump flags and Confederate flags, stormed right past that portrait. The image of George Washington gave them no pause, but it should have. The artist who painted that portrait memorialized that moment because he said it was, quote, one of the highest moral lessons ever given to the world. End of quote. George Washington was the height of his power, having just defeated the most powerful empire on Earth. Could have held on to power as long as he wanted. He could have made himself not a future president, but a future monarch, in effect. And by the way, when he got elected president, he could have stayed for two, three, four, five terms till he died. But that wasn't the America he and the American troops of Valley Forge had fought for. In America, genuine leaders, democratic leaders with a small d, don't hold on to power relentlessly. Our leaders return power to the people, and they do it willingly, because that's the deal. You do your duty. You serve your country. And ours is a country worthy of service, as many Republican presidents and Democratic presidents have shown over the years. We're not perfect, but at our best, we face, on, we face head on the good, the bad, the truth of who we are. We look in the mirror and ultimately never pretend we're something we're not. That's what great nations do. And we're a great nation. We're the greatest nation on the face of the earth. We really are. That's the America I see in our future. We get up. We carry on. We never bow. We never bend. We speak of possibilities, not carnage. We're not weighed down by grievances. We don't foster fear. We don't walk around as victims. We take charge of our destiny. We get our job done with, our people, with the help of the people we find in America who find their place in a changing world and dream and build a future that not only they, but all people deserve a shot at. We don't believe, none of you believe America's failing. 
We know America's winning. That's American patriotism. <clears throat> it's not winning because of Joe Biden. It's winning. It's the first national election since January 6th. Insurrection placed a dagger at the throat of American democracy since that moment. We all know who Donald Trump is. The question we have to answer is, who are we? That's what's at stake. Who are we? In the year ahead, as you talk to your family and friends, cast your ballots, the power is in your hands. After all we've been through in our history, from independence to civil war, to two world wars, to a pandemic, to insurrection, I refuse to believe that in 2024, we Americans will choose to walk away from what's made us the greatest nation in the history of the world. Freedom, liberty, <laughs> democracy is still a sacred cause. And there's no country in the world better positioned to lead the world than America. That's why. I've said it many times, that's why I've never been more optimistic about our future, and I've been doing this a hell of a long time. Just to remember who we are, with patience and fortitude, with one heart. We are the United States of America, for God's sake. I mean it. There is nothing. I believe with every fiber, there is nothing beyond our capacity if we act together and decently with one another. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean it. We're the only nation in the world that's come out of every crisis stronger than we went into that crisis. <clears throat> that was true yesterday. It is true today. And I guarantee you, it will be true tomorrow. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Pennsylvania and the president there laying out a threat to democracy. That's what President Biden says a Trump White House would do if voted into office again at the first campaign event this year. Biden laying out a list of reasons why Trump should not be president. Biden referring to the 91 criminal charges Trump faces stemming from his efforts to overturn his loss to Biden in addition to three other felony cases. Biden describing the violence from January 6th and the deadly insurrection that devastated our country. The president there clearly pushing the theme of political violence and that a Trump White House would only inspire more violence if he were to become president, a threat to our democracy, as President Biden says, leading off with his wife, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden. Let's bring our political director, Rick Klein, in. Also, our White House correspondent, Karen Travers, uh, who is right there uh, in the room. Uh, Karen, uh, I guess it's interesting, and I want you both to, to um, give me your thoughts on this. In a time where uh, President Biden really stuck to talking about the economy, jobs, um, abortion, I mean, I was making a list here, gun violence in America, he comes out talking about one thing, former President Donald Trump. The question is, is that going to work when he needs to rally more than just his base, but he needs to steal away voters uh, from Trump, Karen? And Kira, you know, polls show that Americans care about those pocketbook issues and they care about issues like abortion. But the president today was framing all of that as fundamental freedoms. But for him, he was very clear today that he believes that the central issue for his presidency and now his re-election campaign over the next 11 months is preserving American democracy. He was very clear that with Donald Trump likely as his rival, that that threat is never more greater. This was expected to be a speech where the president ramped up his attacks on the former president and was really going to go after him hard. But Kira, I thought it was more than that. This was an entire speech dedicated to going after Donald Trump, not just for what he did when he was in office, talking about posing up to dictators like Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Also, what he did after he lost the election with all of those legal challenges that the president said he lost in red states, blue states, 
60-some court cases and at the U.S. Supreme Court, and what he has done since, and how Donald Trump has really ramped up the rhetoric about what he will do if he wins the second term. And, you know, you talk about economic issues and how that's what voters care about. The president today, I think, was addressing that subtly by saying, in his view, Donald Trump doesn't care about Americans' future, that what he cares about right now is getting reelected, getting power back, and coming in and having a retribution campaign, a revenge campaign, when he is reelected. So for the president, I think that's a way to sort of neutralize some of those criticisms, that he's not focusing on the economic issues, because he says for him, the threat of a Donald Trump presidency is so great that you have to talk about these democratic issues and fundamental freedoms. Rick, your thoughts. This is why Joe Biden is running for president. And, and Kira, I was struck by a couple of times where he went, I believe, off teleprompter. We went off script a little bit. That's always when it gets interesting. A couple of those that I just jotted down. He said, sometimes I'm happy the Irish in me uh, can't say anything about this. How dare he? Who in God's name does he think he is? And we call them a bad fairy tale. And then at one point he's about Trump, he said, what a sick and he left it lingering. We don't know what was exactly on the president's mind when he didn't finish that phrase, but I think it was clear that he believes this forcefully, passionately, and personally. And the way that he laid out this case is exactly the way a lot of Democrats have been looking forward to. You mentioned earlier, Kira, how he's tried to get traction on Bidenomics and on his view of, uh, view of the economy and, and the feeling that things are getting better in this country. People have not bought that, but they have bought in the past the threat to democracy that the MAGA movement represents. You heard President Biden go through some of the defeats that Donald Trump uh, suffered, not just in 2020, where he suffered a direct defeat, but also in the midterm elections in 2022, when MAGA has been on the ballot in the view of many, many Democrats, including the Biden campaign, Democrats can win. And that's the, the case that you're hearing from the president today uh, and the momentum he'll try to keep up over the next 10 months. And now, Karen, we are set to hear from uh, former President Donald Trump tonight, right? I wonder if he was listening, taking notes, and if he will make his speech all about President Joe Biden. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not entirely like we heard from the president, but I think based on having covered him for all four years in office, he certainly pays attention, and I think he will be firing back from some of his criticisms. But, you know, this was certainly the opening round of this 2024 campaign. I was here in Philadelphia uh, back in the summer of 2023, which was the official launch of the Biden campaign. He had a big rally with union members, and that was an economic message. Kira, this was very different, and now that the calendar says 2024, you can tell that the president uh, has his eye on November. We're going to hear him and see him out on the campaign trail more over the coming months. He's traveling to South Carolina on Monday to give a speech at Mother Emanuel AME Church, where, of course, there was that horrific shooting back in 2015. And then he's going to be on the road again at the end of the week, coming back to another battleground state. So this is all very much the president ramping up these efforts. And I think we will see him continue these criticisms of Donald Trump. And I think based on how that speech went, this is clearly a topic and a, a framework for him that he feels so passionate about, much more so perhaps than those economic issues. And, and as Rick said, this is an area where they feel that he can maybe rev some people up because they're not buying what he's selling so far on the Bidenomics agenda. Well, it's definitely a different uh, talking point, tactic, whatever you want to call it. We'll see if it works. Rick, Karen, thank you so much. And thank you all for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips from Breaking News to all the stories that matter to you. The news never stops. GMA3 is up next. What you need to know right now on GMA3. The first day back for high school students in Iowa, shattered by gunfire. What we are now learning about the student police say killed a sixth grader, injuring five others. And at least 15 states now on alert for snow and ice and that major storm barreling east. Ginger Z is here with the latest. The new law aimed at improving the mental health of new moms. We'll hear from the Arkansas state legislator behind the measure and what it may signal for families all across the country. I share my story to be a cautionary tale so that the next person that might be in a situation like mine, they don't take 
the route that I did. Opening up, the first national TV interview with convicted murderer Gypsy Rose Blanchard since her release from prison. Plus, identity and all its glory. The global next-gen pastor redefining race and ethnicity on this Faith Friday. And bottoms up, dry January doesn't have to be dull. A top mixologist joins us with the innovative mocktails to brighten any happy hour. And Coraline, why don't you sit across from me? Don't. I'm happy you're not white. Me too. And the new movie getting Oscar buzz, American fiction star Erica Alexander joins us right here in studio. Now from Times Square, DeMarco Morgan and Eva Pilgrim with Dr. Jen Ashton and what you need to know. It is Friday, the first Friday of 2024, oh. might I add. Sounds oh. pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. And welcome to What You Need to Know. You like how I asked you, I was like, is this real? <laughs> is this real? <laughs> Please tell me it's We're real. We're doing it. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Dr. Jen. You guys, too. TGIF. It is good to see you guys. Yes, let's talk medical news now yeah. with America's favorite doctor. I love saying it. You know that. So there's a study out there taking a look at how sleep quality when we're younger can have an impact on our brain as we age. Correct. Mm. And you said the key words, DeMarco, when we're younger. So this study... Uh, really about quality and quantity. Let me take you through it uh, because I think you'll find the results as interesting as I did. Uh, published in the journal Neurology, they looked at people in their 30s and 40s, had them wear wrist trackers just about six days, and then followed them up 11 years later, giving them some cognitive tests, um, and they analyzed memory, learning, processing speed in this small group. What they found is that the people in this group who had reported and noted disrupted poor sleep in their 30s and 40s we're at two times greater risk for low cognitive performance. So that's things like verbal frequency, fluency, memory, learning issues uh, when tested 11 years down the road. Big picture, one in three Americans do not get enough sleep every night. I think three of us yeah. maybe yeah. sitting right here. Right. Um, and I will say that the estimates are that 39 million Americans suffer from sleep apnea, which can cause disrupted sleep. So this is really about connecting the dots of what we can do midlife to help our cognitive function later in life. But sometimes it's other people making my sleep not so great. Oh. Are you speaking about your little toddler or your husband? Which right. one? I was keeping it generic. There you go. Well, that's for another second. All right. Thanks, Dr. Thanks, Jen. Doc. We turn now to ABC's Tim Pulliam in Los Angeles with our latest headlines. Hey, Tim, welcome. Hey, how are you guys? Thank you so much. I'm one of those that could use some better sleep. So good to be with you. Happy Friday. And we begin with the snow and ice alert across at least 15 states. As we head into the weekend, Ginger Z with the latest on the big storm. Here it comes. That storm has already wrapped up and started. Amarillo, Texas, one to three inches. Parts of the Panhandle had three to five. Wichita woke up with the snow, but it is going to move across the Gulf Coast as mostly rain and even some severe storms. Tornadoes possible. New Orleans this afternoon over into the Florida Panhandle, but we track it right up into the Mid-Atlantic, Southern Appalachia, and that's where it starts Saturday. And then into Sunday morning, it'll still be wrapping around in New England. So what does it leave behind? It's quick. It's certainly warmer at the coast, so that means that New York City, even if you see a few snowflakes flying first, you are going to see rain on top of that. But Boston could get that wraparound snow and finally get some inches. The biggest, though, will be away from the coast, Berkshires, Poconos, those types of places if you need the snow. All right, thank you, Ginger. And another school shooting in America on the first day back after the winter break at the high school in Perry, Iowa. Gunshots erupting before classes even began. At least one student killed, four other students injured. The principal also hurt. Police say the 17-year-old gunman took his own life. And the job numbers just out here at home, the nation adding a strong 216,000 jobs in December, exceeding expectations. The unemployment rate unchanged. It's the 23rd straight month joblessness has remained below 4%. And a new report in the Wall Street Journal says one of the world's biggest supermarket chains overseas has dropped Pepsi and Lay's products over what it calls unacceptable price hikes over two years. Carrefour stores across more than 30 countries refusing to sell the soda and snack products anymore. A PepsiCo spokesperson says good faith discussions continue.
And coming soon from the U.S. Mint, Americans can now buy the coins bearing the portrait of Civil War hero Harriet Tubman. Three new commemorative coins are now available for pre-order. Shipping begins next month. Well, Tubman's image is on a $5 gold coin, a silver dollar, and a half dollar, all celebrating her 200th birthday. What a great collector's item. Yeah, I want one. So. I know. I think we could all use one. All right, Tim, thank you very much. I'm very proud of you. Good to see you. All right, still ahead on this Friday on GMA3, requiring new moms to be screened for depression. We're going to take a look at a new measure that lawmakers hope will help save lives. Plus, she served time for killing her own mother. Now, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, in her own words, our Deborah Roberts with the conversation coming up. Stay with us. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. All right. Here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes. It's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> you cute. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Welcome back to GMA3. A new law in Arkansas puts maternal mental health into focus. The measure requires moms to get screened for depression within weeks of giving birth. And the law comes as family welfare advocates call for a closer look at mental health and well-being during this critical time. And joining us now is the lead sponsor of the bill, Arkansas State Representative Aaron Pilkington. Good to see you, Representative, and thanks for being with us. Good to see you as well. Thank you for having me. All right, so this law kicked in January 1st. Break it down for us and tell us why it's needed in Arkansas. Sure. Well, Arkansas is one of the states with the worst uh, maternal and infant mortality rates. And so looking at ways to improve that is something I've spent a lot of years and a lot of time doing. And one of the interesting studies that actually came out from the University of Arkansas for medical science was a study about uh, maternal mental health and ways to improve it. And so to me, this seemed like a golden opportunity to put something in place that would help out our mothers here in Arkansas, help them get the care they need. And so we designed a law uh, that essentially would cover these services, require that they're provided, and that uh, their insurance is paid for, whether it's private insurance or Medicaid, and uh, make sure that the providers perform it. And so by doing this, we're hoping to turn the turn the curve when it comes to uh, mental health uh, and maternity cases here in Arkansas. And I'm, I'm really optimistic about the possibility of improving uh, mental health for young moms and all moms really here in Arkansas. Yeah, I mean, this is so critical. Uh, as an OBGYN, I know, unfortunately, that psychiatric issues are a leading cause of maternal death and morbidity, as you said, during pregnancy and postpartum. So specifically, we get the concept, but how do you think this law will turn things around? Well, I think by 
one's pain, you're going to see providers offer the service more and more. You know, Arkansas is a state that doesn't have as many providers as we need, so oftentimes they're, they're overworked, they've got a lot going on. But when you reimburse it, you're likely going to see an increase in this provided. And with this law, they, they have to require it unless the mother opts out. And so by doing this, we're just hoping to catch things early on, not let these this important part, which is the mental health screening, fall through the cracks. And, you know, if we're able to catch this early on within the first six weeks, the hope is that we're able to get mom the care she needs so that uh, she can have a uh, healthy postpartum um, time with her new baby. And, you know, I tell people all the time, this it not only helps the mother, but it helps the child as well. If, if mom is having some issues, uh, you know, her getting the help she needs is vitally important to make sure that that baby gets the help they need as well. So uh, a good environment for mom is a good environment for baby. And so we think this is both pro-mom and pro-baby. And so we're very happy about that. Um, let's be real, babies are expensive. And a lot of families, they just don't have uh -huh. a lot of extra money right now. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, who is paying for this? So what we're doing is we're requiring the private health insurance to pay for this as well as requiring Medicaid in Arkansas to pay for it as well. So uh, it isn't coming out of the pockets of the moms. It's coming out of the insurance pockets, uh, which is, is an important part of this. You know, we could say that, oh, we want this covered, but if no one's going to pay for it, it's not going to get done. And so that was actually a vital part of this bill was making sure that it's getting covered. Um, and so that's that's our hope. You're right. It's it's expensive to have children here in Arkansas. I've got two. I've got a third one on the way. Uh, it's it's pricey for sure. But uh, we wanted to make sure that these screens are being done because you know having a child. I mean that's you know it's it's a beautiful thing, but it's it's life altering. It's it's a very stressful time. I mean with our first child, it was during COVID. We had a C-section at you know 11:30 at night. I mean it was it was it was a very traumatic time for us. And I just remember sitting there uh, the next day, holding my baby as my wife slept, just thinking, how do some of these people go through this, especially single moms and moms that don't have the support system that my wife had. And so it really broke my heart when I thought about it. And I just thought, you know, you come home with a new baby, your life's completely changed. Maybe you had a C-section. Uh, you know, that's a whole complication in and of itself. And so, you know, is anyone ever asking mom, hey, how are you doing? What's what's going on with you? Are you feeling okay? And like I said, because this is a very, uh, in some cases, traumatic time when you're giving birth, especially your first time, you know, some of these uh, mental health issues that may have been underneath the surface or maybe not dealt with, they can rise up. And so it, this is a good time to get those issues addressed. You know, make sure that you're getting referred to a provider, a mental health provider who can help take care of these issues. And, and so that's our hope is that we kind of get people on the right track and so that we can catch this early on and make sure mom's being taken care of. Well, Arkansas State Representative Aaron Pilkington, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. And this programming note, be sure to catch the important ABC News report on women's reproductive health on the brink tonight on ABC at 8 p.m. Eastern. Just ahead here on GMA3, it was a case that gripped the nation. Most certainly, Gypsy Rose Blanchard served eight years behind bars for the killing of her mother. The candid conversation with our very own Deborah Roberts when we come back. Tonight, tracking the cross-country storm, plus the wars in Gaza and Ukraine, and growing conflicts in the Middle East with so much at stake. More Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television, World News Tonight with David Muir. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, the Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City, getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news, only on ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Chicago. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. 
Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Reporting from the Federal Reserve, I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. All right, folks, we're back now with the gripping story that captured so much attention. Gypsy Rose Blanchard convicting of orchestrating the murder of her own mother. She is now out of prison and speaking out for the first time. What she has to say about her new freedom, fame, and her future. Our Deborah Roberts with the ABC News exclusive. I share my story to be a cautionary tale. Gypsy Rose Blanchard is finally tasting the freedom she's long dreamed of. Tell me about the day you stepped out from behind the prison walls. You don't realize how much you're restricted in prison. I felt like I was in a black and white world and I just stepped into Technicolor. Um, it, it was amazing. Her world shifting after spending nearly nine years in prison for helping plot the murder of her own mother. Gypsy, a victim of her mother's psychological disorder, commonly known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy, in which parents seek sympathy through the exaggerated or made up illnesses of their children. Since childhood, Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee, portrayed her daughter as frail, disabled, suffering from multiple illnesses, including leukemia and muscular dystrophy, subjecting the girl to life in a wheelchair, a feeding tube, and unnecessary surgeries, even having some of her teeth removed. It was all a lie. I don't believe my mother was a monster. She had a lot of demons herself that she was struggling with. In 2015, Gypsy says she reached a breaking point and plotted with a boyfriend she met online, Nicholas Godijan, to kill her mother. Gypsy would later plead guilty to second degree murder. Godijan was convicted of carrying out the stabbing death and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. During her prison stay, public fascination with Gypsy exploded. Her story portrayed in multiple documentaries and a drama series, The Act. I'm so trapped. And I can't tell anyone. Gypsy now sharing unscripted personal details about her past in a Lifetime docuseries, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. You say that you were addicted to painkillers. Mm -hmm. How serious was this addiction? You know, this is, this is really hard to talk about um, because it took me down a really dark path. Um, but I felt like it was my only way to cope for a time. Hey everyone, this is Gypsy. I'm finally free. Her journey sparking a cult-like following online. Do you feel any conflict with that? You've got fame, even though you participated in a murder? Of course I feel conflicted. Um, fame is not what I'm looking for. Um, I always said I think I'm infamous, and then I came out famous. Ryan Anderson, her new husband who wrote Gypsy in prison, was waiting outside the prison doors after his wife's release. Oh, I missed you. I missed you too. So this is your happily ever after, the gal who liked being a princess. It is, yeah. I had to kiss a couple frogs to get to this one. Handsome face. Oh, thank you, baby. All right, our many thanks to Deborah for that report. The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard a premieres tonight at 8 Eastern Time on Lifetime. And up here on GMA3, Dr. Jen's prescription for those who struggle with racing thoughts. All the time. Yes. It's a struggle there. Plus, a recipe for something refreshing and booze-free. The dry January fun that you won't want to miss. Come on back. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Give it to me. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news source comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being no, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. All right, we're back now with Dr. Jana, and we are taking a look at a, a new study that's out taking a look at how scientists looked at the cells of people with long COVID and found their cells that generate less energy. Remember your high school biology, you guys, mitochondria, the powerhouse mm. of the cell? So that seems to be a leading contender in the theory of long COVID. So big picture, um, one in eight, it's estimated maybe even more people who have COVID-19 illness, regardless of the severity, will go on to have persistent symptoms that can last for months or longer. So when you think about the number of people in this country and worldwide who've had COVID, then imagine a significant percentage of them dealing with persistent symptoms. We did not know why. And part of the reason for that is that the symptoms range head to toe. So whenever something affects your brain, your mood, your sleep, your lungs, your heart, your skin, you start to look for what is the common pathway here. Mm. And so uh, a recent study published in Nature Communications, very, very small study, but interesting and promising, found that one of the culprits may be mitochondria dysfunction. So these are the part of the cell that churns out energy. And if they're not working well, you don't oxygenate those tissues and organ systems well and pain and and deficits can occur so it all goes back to that high school biology i remember that we had gummy snacks yeah. to use to make that's those right things. that's what they look like. that's what sticks in my head that's what they look is there like. a way to increase the energy in at, your mitochondria at, not at this point right now for dealing with covid 19 but the first step is trying to string together that cause and effect and then if it bears out you know real certainty then you can start to target kind of intervention prevention and treatment Treatment. All right, we're back in a moment. Stay with us. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Tonight. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Raya alive. The all-new 2020, tonight at 9, 8 central on ABC. ABC Tonight. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special. Tonight on ABC.
Tonight, tracking the cross-country storm, plus the wars in Gaza and Ukraine, and growing conflicts in the Middle East with so much at stake. More Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television, World News Tonight with David Muir. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. And hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. Some of the top headlines we're watching for you right now on ABC News Live this hour. Starting with President Biden launching his first major campaign event of 2024, delivering a speech near Valley Forge on the eve of the third anniversary of the January 6th deadly attack on our Capitol. The president calling out former President Trump by name, saying he doesn't care about America. He only cares about himself and that he is a threat to our democracy. Today, we're here to answer the most important of questions. Is democracy still America's sacred cause? I mean it. This is not rhetorical, academic, or hypothetical. Whether democracy is still America's sacred cause is the most urgent question of our time. And it's what the 2024 election is all about. And as President Biden hits the campaign trail, Republican presidential hopefuls are in Iowa attempting to make an impression on voters there as they're gearing up to cast the first ballots during the Iowa caucus in just 10 days. Wayne LaPierre, the embattled longtime leader of the National Rifle Association, is stepping down, citing health reasons. The announcement comes just days before LaPierre's trial is set to begin in a corruption case brought by New York Attorney General Letitia James. LaPierre has run the NRA, the nation's largest gun rights group, since 1991, and he says he'll never stop supporting the NRA and its fight to defend Second Amendment freedom. His last day will be January 31st. Well, he was stopped, restrained, and then died at the hands of Aurora, Colorado. First responders, now the only police officer convicted of negligent homicide in 23-year-old Elijah McLean's death, is being sentenced today. Randy Rodema was among three, or five, rather, first responders that came to the 911 caller that reported McLean as sketchy and wearing a ski mask. His family later explained that he wore that because he was anemic and easily got cold. Officers forcefully restrained McLean as paramedics later administered ketamine, which ultimately killed him. McLean's mother is expected to speak at the sentencing. Rodema is facing multiple years in prison. At a programming note, 21 Loyal and True, that's the title of a new ABC News and ESPN Films documentary. It actually follows the Uvalde High School football team during a tragic and emotional 2022 season, just weeks after that shooting at Robb Elementary. I hope you'll watch. I guarantee you'll be cheering them on from the sidelines as they battle through a season of highs and lows. You can watch our doc streaming on ESPN Plus and tonight right here on ABC News Live, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, ABC News Live is here for you 24-7. You can always find us on your favorite streaming service, the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops, neither do we. GMA3 starts right now.
We are back now with Dr. Jan, who's taking a look at some of the questions that you are sending in. And here's the first question right here. Are there benefits to drinking spearmint tea for PCOS? And I have a question. What well, in the world is PCOS? Yes, because you know how we love the acronym mm -hmm. and letters in medicine. So it stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome, thought to affect about 15%, mm. maybe even higher, of women. Um, it is referred to and known as, in the field of gynecology, the most common but least well understood hormonal disorder affecting women. Uh, so, in my opinion, we cannot talk about it enough. The diet, nutrition, hormonal interaction, it is, that is the sweet spot, in my opinion, uh, of both gynecology and women's health. This is interesting because there have been reports in the peer-reviewed medical literature, small, granted, but, but compelling, that there's an anti-androgenic, which just means kind of anti-testosterone, anti-male hormone effect in women with PCOS who have excessive hair, whether that's facial or body hair, when they drink peppermint tea, it's unclear why, but two cups a day in small studies have been shown over as, as short as one month to lower acne and body hair. So again, mm. when you talk about any kind of intervention, you guys have heard me say this so many times, risk benefit, what's the risk of drinking peppermint tea twice a day? Not a lot, right? So it helps with that and little fuzz up here. It might. It, and, and now here's the thing when you're talking about hirsutism or hair uh, with polycystic ovarian syndrome, you have to wait a long time to see the results. This one particular study that I looked at saw results in 30 days. Again, it was a small study. But in general, when you talk about hair, either seeing more or seeing less, you have to wait several months. And that's just because of the life cycle of a hair follicle. And this has been all over TikTok as well for like hormonal acne. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Anti-androgenic. So that just means potential for anti-testosterone. Um, and again, very little risk potentially a benefit so go ahead and try it your prescription for wellness okay so today has to do with how to stop those racing busy mind thoughts that so many of us have both day and night um, particularly at night so some tips number one stay in the moment stay in the present don't worry about things too far in the future or the past because they're usually not in your control use a mantra so that's just a comfortable saying that you can repeat to yourself over and over again when you want to refocus yourself and then writing your thoughts down on paper, believe it or not, the old fashioned way, can just remove it from here, put it somewhere that you can compartmentalize and say, I'm gonna talk to a mental health professional or talk to someone else or just revisit this at another time. But there it is, not there. That's good advice there. I'm always thinking about what I have to do the next day or the day after and it just never turns off. Right, just in the moment. Be in the moment. Zach. All right, what was that? <laughs> All right, Doc, thank you very much. And folks, we would love to hear from you, so hit us up on Instagram with all of your medical questions for Dr. Jen at ABCGMA3. My mind was already racing. <laughs> when we come back, looking at identity through the lens of faith, our Faith Friday conversation coming up. Plus, we are raising a glass to dry January with some delicious mocktail recipes. What's so more, we, we come back. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought, my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. 
first thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Tonight, tracking the cross-country storm, plus the wars in Gaza and Ukraine, and growing conflicts in the Middle East. With so much at stake, more Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television, World News Tonight with David Muir. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. All right, welcome back. It is Faith Friday, and our next guest is a pastor. He's a leader and author who is asking tough and thought-provoking questions about identity. In his new book, Mixed, he explores the multiple components of who we are and how to find peace within that complexity. Please help us welcome Ellie Bonilla, Jr. Thank you so much for Good being with us. Yes. And, and let's talk a little bit about your journey. Back in 2020, you sort of went on this journey to figure out what your identity was. Mm -hmm. talk, us, talk to us about that. Yeah, in 2020, we were uh, having a lot of cultural conversations, especially around race and ethnicity. And my heritage is uh, Dominican. My mother's from Dominican Republic and my dad's an immigrant from Mexico. And so when we were having these conversations, I found very quickly that I didn't fit quite neatly in the box of the conversation and that caused me to ask a couple questions about conversations around culture identity and the self and so that began a journey that produced the book that i have now but do you say it's okay not to fit in the box yeah no i i say that because it, it's so beautiful especially in in the faith that i have that we're all uniquely designed and that this journey of self-discovery has a destination and that destination is a divine designer that there's there is a god that designed us so uniquely and so beautifully each individually that conversations can't contain who we are and the identity we're given what is it fearfully and wonderfully made, made yes, i sir. love that right yes, there sir. so it's the new year a lot of times we reflect and we look at, you know, what we did last year and we have resolutions and all of that stuff. How can we lean into our true selves? Yeah, I think that the journey all uh, begins and ends with Jesus. You know, when I was writing this book, I was trying to figure myself out and I realized that I was able to find all these different pieces. I mean, the book's called Mixed. There was so much mixture with my background growing up and all these pieces, but I didn't understand how they all fit together. I had to go to the source and I found that in Jesus. And so as we go through our New Year's resolutions, it's let's go back to the designer the one that holds the blueprint, the one that knows how all these pieces fit together. And I think that's a good journey to go on. We ask all of our Faith Friday guests to give us words as wis of wisdom. And you're our first one as we head into yeah. the weekend here in 2024. If you could leave us with some Yeah, words. so I guess mine is uh, a word for the year. And I think it's ultimately the greatest commandment that Jesus gives us. It's to love him first with everything, with our mind, soul, and our strength. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so first and foremost, love God with everything. And once you know his love, we can love because he loved us. Then we can love ourselves properly. Properly. And if we have a proper love for ourselves and God, we can love those around us. You the man. You the man. Thank <laughs> you very first much. Corinthians yeah, thank you. Yes. We appreciate Ellie Bonilla that. Jr., thank you so much for being here. Thank and you. you can pick up a copy of Mixed Everywhere Books Are Sold. Yeah, he was good. Yeah. Up next here on GMA3, we are raising a glass to dry January with some fabulous mocktails. Right after the pastor, right? <laughs> Our next guest embraces a no alcohol culture, by the way, so that's pretty good. And I will teach us how to make the perfect booze-free espresso martino. Come on back. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news.
Tonight, tracking the cross-country storm, plus the wars in Gaza and Ukraine, and growing conflicts in the Middle East. With so much at stake, more Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television, World News Tonight with David Muir. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live.